Hello! In this video, I'll be explaining how to find if a number is prime using the Miller-Rabin primality test. So what is a primality test? Well, basically, it's a function that takes in a positive integer n, and it tells us whether that integer is prime or composite. And this has many applications in, for example, cryptography, um, where we have to find very large prime numbers. So before we get into the explanation, it could be helpful to understand a little bit of modular arithmetic and a little bit of algebra, but I'll explain the necessary symbols and notation here. So, first thing to know about modular arithmetic is that it's basically about the study of remainders when you divide one integer by another. So, the only um, important notation that we need to understand is this. A is equivalent to B mod, ooh, mod n. So, for the purposes of this video, this basically means that when we divide A by n, we get a remainder of B. So, for example, if we divide 52, by 10, we get a remainder of 2. And we would write that is, as 52 is equivalent to 2 mod 10, because when we divide 52 by 10, we get 5 and then a remainder of 2. So that's basically what this notation means. Um, also, if we write a is equivalent to 0 mod n, that basically means when we divide a by n, we get a whole number. We get an integer. So that means that a is divisible by n, or n is a divisor of a. So that's all the necessary um, notation for modular arithmetic. Okay, the next thing that we need to understand before we go into the explanation is called difference of squares. And this is basically really simple. It tells us that x squared minus y squared equals x minus y times x plus y. And you just get this if you expand it out. Um, this is just a very common factorization. Just remember that x squared minus y squared is equal to x minus y times x plus y. Okay, so now we can actually get into the test itself. So we're given an integer n, and we need to do a function, and we need to tell if n is prime or composite. For now, we'll assume that n is greater than 2. So in order to tell if n is prime or composite, we're going to assume it's prime, and then if ever we arrive at a wrong conclusion, if we ever arrive at a false statement, that means that our original assumption was wrong, that n was prime, and that means that n is composite. So if we ever get something wrong, then we know that n is composite. So now, um, what we're going to do is we're going to pick a random integer a between 1 and n minus 1. Random integer a between 1 and n minus 1. And it can be, this can be any random number. So our next step comes from the mathematician Fermat. Right? His little theorem tells us that a to the n minus 1 is equivalent to 1 mod n, if n is prime. And remember that what this means is that when we take a to the n minus 1 and we divide it by n, we get a remainder of 1. So what we can do next is we can write a to the n minus 1 minus 1 is equivalent to 0 mod n. Because um, in modular arithmetic, when we have this equivalent sign, it's basically equivalent to the equal sign in regular math. So we can subtract and add numbers on both sides. So we get a to the n minus 1 minus 1 is equivalent to 0 mod n. Now remember the difference of squares factorization? Yeah. So if n is prime, then n minus 1 must be even. So we can do a difference of squares factorization. We can do a to the n minus 1 over 2 minus 1 times a to the n minus 1 over 2 plus 1 is equivalent to 0 mod n. Because this, this expression over here became this expression over here using our difference of squares factorization. So now that we have this, we can take a look at the left term. If n minus 1 over 2 is even, then we can factorize this even further. We can make this become a to the n minus 1 over 4 minus 1 times a to the n minus 1 over 4 plus 1 times a to the n minus 1 over 2 plus 1 is equivalent to 0 mod n. And notice that one term over here, this term over here, became two terms because we factorized it again using difference of squares. And this implies that n minus 1 over 2 has to be even. That doesn't have to be the case. If n minus 1 over 2 is already odd, then we just stop at this step. But if it's even, then we can continue to factorize it. So if it's even, we, we can factorize it like this with a to the n minus 1 over 4. If this exponent is still even, if n minus 1 over 4 is still even, then we can factorize it even further, still using difference of squares. And that would become a to the n minus 1 over 8 minus 1 times a to the n minus 1 over 8 plus 1 times a to the n minus 1 over 4 plus 1 times a to the n minus 1 over 2 plus 1. And this is all equivalent to 0 mod n. So we can keep doing this. We can keep um, factorizing the leftmost term, the minus 1 term, using difference of squares if the exponent is still even. So we do this until the exponent becomes odd. So for example, we end up at a to the n minus 1 over some power of 2 minus 1 times a to the n minus 1 over two, some power of 2 plus 1 dot 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 
times a to the n minus 1 over 2 plus 1. And this is equivalent to 0 mod n. And then once we get this big expansion, we know that we can't expand this left term any further. Because if we could, then we should do it even further. So this, this exponent has to be odd. And what we do now is that if n is prime, that's what we assumed at the beginning, um, and we're looking for a contradiction, then n has to divide one of these terms. Because this left-hand side being equivalent to 0 mod n, remember, that means this left-hand side is divisible by n. So n has to divide into one of these terms. And you might think that this is kind of obvious, but it's not. If n is not prime, then it doesn't have to divide into one of these terms. So for example, we consider the number 4. 4 is not prime. Um, and it divides into 12. But 12 is equal to 2 times 6, and 4 doesn't divide into any of these. 4 doesn't divide 2, nor does it divide 6, but it does divide 12. And this is just saying that if n is prime, it does have to divide at least one of these terms on the left-hand side. So we check these one by one um, through the powers of 2, and then if at least one of them is divisible by n, then we know our condition is satisfied and nothing was violated. However, if none of these are divisible by n, then we know that n is not prime, because at the beginning, we assumed that n was prime and we worked our way to a conclusion. And if this conclusion is false, if n doesn't divide any of these terms, then we know n is composite, because it, it violated our original assumption that n was prime. So to summarize, we were given a value of n, we took a random value of a between 1 and n minus 1, we followed these steps, we used the difference of squares factorization, and then we arrived at a conclusion. If n divides at least one of these, then n is probably prime. However, if n divides none of these, then n has to be composite. If n passes this test, there is a three-fourths probability that we are right. So if it passes this test, there is a three-fourths probability that n is actually prime. However, if it passes this test, there is actually a one-fourth probability n is composite. So this test isn't perfect. It's only 75% right, right? Well, no. Remember, at the beginning, we chose a random value of a. So if we choose a different value of a, then our chance of being wrong goes from 1 fourth to 1 16th. And you can see where this is going. If we use, for example, 40 values of a, if we use 40 values of a, then our chance of being wrong goes to 1 over 4 to the power of 40. And this is a very small chance of being wrong. This is equal to 2 to the negative 80. And for scale, we can say that if we did one of these tests every second since the start of the universe, um, which is 13.8 trillion years ago, then we would still only have a 1 in 1 million chance of being wrong. So this test is very accurate as long as we do many different values of a, and it doesn't have to be even a very large value of a, it can even be 40. So if we do this test many, many times for many values of a, and n passes all of these tests, then we are probably right in that n is prime. So that's the basics of the miller rabin primality test. If we're given an integer n, we can tell if it's prime or composite. But still, this is a probabilistic test, even if it's very, very good, there is still a very, very, very small chance of it being wrong. So we can't be certain if it's prime or not, but we can be very, very sure. So that's the miller rabin primality test explained. I hope this helped you out. I hope you learned something. If you have any feedback, please leave them in the comments below. And thanks for watching. Goodbye.